So, gonna do a little uh, show and tell tutorial, I guess, on how to make Kira load a little bit faster. Um, quite a bit faster. I think it about halves it, generally. Um, I've done this completely trial and error. Uh, I can only do it on a Mac for you because I haven't used a Windows machine in so long. I don't know exactly how to get to the files on Windows, but I'm sure somebody um, who knows Windows a lot better can figure it out rather easily. It's simply deleting some files that you don't need to load. Um, it's pretty simple. Again, this is trial and error. I did a lot of this by pulling files and screwing things up and then deleting Kira and reloading it. And um, So, you know, take it as a grain of salt. If you do anything to Kira or your computer, that's your own problem. I can't be responsible for, you know, you screwing up your computer. Um, honestly, the worst thing you do is screw up Kira, which all you do is download it and reinstall it, which is, I did it half a dozen times figuring this out. Let's get to it. Uh, sorry about a couple of the images. Uh, my computer is a little old and slow. So a few times I actually had to take this GoPro and shoot the screen instead of doing on screen because the computer is so slow it made the whole thing run slow. So the actual time difference is through the GoPro so there's no uh, processor use while the application is actually loading. But yeah, let's get to it and I'll show you some very simple methods of deleting some files to make your uh, load faster. Let's go to it. On how to improve your Cura startup time. So we all know it takes forever to start up Cura now. It's gotten worse with the Cura 2s and 3s. Now I'm using the uh, 3.1 beta, but this works with anything from 2 on up. So what you're going to do, let's start that over. So what you're going to do is you right click on the application. There's this right here, show packages. You're going to show the contents. And... Go all the way down to resources many times. These are all the things that load every time Cura starts up. What we want to do is eliminate a lot of this stuff. Preferably starting with these definitions. What these definitions are is a bunch of different layouts, designs, preferences for particular printers. The thing about it is, is it loads it every single time it starts up. It loads all of them. Now. If you have a Hero 101, keep this. If you have a Creality CR10, keep these. See where they say Creality CR10. If you have a BQ, obviously keep those. Folger check, blah, blah, blah. You can get rid of everything else. Now, there's three files you need to keep. For me, it's custom. Or if you have a particular model of printer, whether you have an Ultimaker 2, 3, whatever, Ultimaker original, you need to keep that original file. You also need to keep the FDM extruder and the FDM printer. Missing, you may be able to do other things, but I highly recommend not deleting them immediately. I put them in the trash, but I don't delete it until I've restarted and tested. But if you delete all of these, it won't load them at start. As we all know, that startup process, if you watch what it's doing, it says loading printers or loading profiles forever. So all you need is a three. Or for, you know, if you have multiple printers, obviously you want to keep your profiles for each of your printers. The extruders, I'm not too sure about. I haven't played with these yet. I'm assuming you can probably get rid of a bunch of these. And actually, I'm going to try it right now for the first time. I have no idea what a builder premium large front is. But let's get rid of it. Carson and Custom I'm going to leave because I'm not sure which ones it needs. Make it Ultimaker Vortex. Let's get rid of all these. Now I'm still figuring some of this out myself. 
I haven't figured this out, and I've been doing it trial and error. I'm going to leave the firmware for now. I probably don't need it. Um, I'm going to leave these for now. Materials, we can definitely get rid of them. Now, I do leave all the generics, especially if you're you know, going to use them. And if you're using any of these materials, by all means, save the profile. It's probably very good. So I'll just keep those. The meshes. These are the little displays. Again, if you have a Folger Tech FT5 or a Delta Comb or something like that, keep the ones for your printer. But otherwise, get rid of them. Now I think you have to keep one. So I will keep one. For some reason I think it freaks out if I took all of them out. If you eliminate a lot of this stuff, now nothing in here you want to touch, or at least not that I've discovered yet. Shaders, leave, themes, leave, variants. Now, again, these are particular to the uh, printers. I think I'm going to leave them for now. I haven't played with them much yet. But if you eliminate a lot of this stuff, like I said, let's go in now and actually start it up. Now I'm going to switch over because if I start it up with uh, QuickTime running, recording the screen, it slows it down a lot. So I will go back to my camera and do a direct outside shot of the screen as it loads. And there you go. That's how you uh, make Cura start up a little faster. Um, it's not a lot, but it, it time is time. It's your time. Cura is very slow loading. So, yeah, give it a shot. Maybe make your Cura run a little faster. Have a good one.